Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see I got my hater blockers on today. Nobody can stop my shine, and nobody has been able to stop the Longhorns shine all week. They dominated on early signing day, getting everybody that had previously committed, including Arch Manning, the crown jewel of this class, to sign on the dotted line. Then on early signing day, you bring in Tassili Akana, one of the best defenders in the nation. Then you follow that up the next day by bringing in one of the best receivers in the country, flipping DeAndre Moore from Louisville to the 40 Acres University of Texas and getting him to sign on the dotted line. So Texas killed it in recruiting this week. And we're going to talk about that today on today's episode of Locked on Longhorn, specifically DeAndre Moore. And then continuing with the recruiting, Steve Wiltfong from 24-7 said that Texas is starting to recruit the front seven at a championship level. When was the last time you heard that? Or have you ever heard that? Texas is starting to recruit the front seven at a championship level. We talked about it a little with John Garcia, director of football recruiting at Sports Illustrated. We dive into it a little bit more on today's episode of Locked on Longhorns. Before we get into it, I just want to say, if you're in Texas, I know you're dealing with some weather you're not necessarily used to. I'm in Houston right now. It's 20 degrees. It is super cold. So I hope you're staying warm out there, my friends. And I hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend. I hope you enjoy your holiday weekend this weekend. You spend it with family, spend it with friends, spend it with the people you love, however you spend it. I hope you enjoy it. From Jonathan Davis here at Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. DeAndre Moore is a Texas Longhorn. Before I talk about DeAndre Moore, I want to talk about Coach Brennan Marion and recruiting, right? And I say recruiting can be funny. Sometimes recruiting can be hilarious. And I know recruiting can be hilarious because I came on Locked On Longhorns about five, six months ago screaming that Texas had missed out on Anthony Hill and Colton Vasek, and that was a problem for this team moving forward. And now both are signed to the 40 acres, right? Recruiting can be hilarious. When you talk about Brennan Marion, our wide receiver coach, we saw the impact that he had at the University of Pittsburgh. And we knew it was a home run hire when Steve Sarkeesian brought him in because at the University of Pittsburgh in his last year, Pitt won the ACC championship. And at the University of Pitt in his last year, Jordan Addison won the Belitnikoff for the best receiver in the country, being coached by Brendan Marion. And so our question was, what impact would Brendan Marion have on the 40 acres? Future tense, right? Then when we looked at the wide receiver room this year, a lot of people felt like production wise, they were underwhelming. And we didn't see the production we thought we would from receivers like Brendan Thompson, Savion Red, Ajay Hall. Hell, they weren't even on the field like we thought they were. So then the question pivoted to what impact has Brendan Marion had on the 40 acres. Then we know that Brendan Marion was one of the pioneers of the go-go offense, but we didn't see many go-go principles in the Texas offense this season. And so the question was, what impact has Brendan Marion had on the 40 acres? Then when we looked at the recruiting class, you lost out on talented receiver in the Austin area, Jaden Greathouse to Notre Dame, talented Texas receiver, Jalen Hill to Alabama, Whatever the situation was, talented Texas receiver Jaquez Petaway to your rival in the Oklahoma Sooners. And then you looked at the recruiting class that we put together. We had Jonah Wilson, who the staff was early on, did a great eval. He jumped 100 spots his senior year, but he decommits and commits to the University of Houston. Then Ryan Niblett, a Houston kid, takes a surprise visit to Houston, writing on the wall as he might decommit and flip to the University of Houston. So just two weeks ago, it looked as though – Jonte Cook, as talented as he is, might be our only wide receiver in this 2023 recruiting class, which would have been underwhelming given that Arch Manning would be the one pulling the trigger. He's the quarterback of this recruiting class. So you can only bring in one receiver. That would have been underwhelming. But like I said, recruiting can be hilarious because now two days removed from early signing day, Texas has three top 100 receivers committed in Jonte Cook, Ryan Niblett, and DeAndre Moore. So what a great job by Steve Sarkeesian. What a great job by Brendan Marion. And what a great job by this coaching staff bringing in one of the best receiver groups in the country, one of the best receiver groups in one class Texas has ever seen. And when you talk about DeAndre Moore, who is one third of that class, he's just such a special playmaker, the type of playmaker that you put the ball in his hands and he makes special things happen. And not only is he a special playmaker, but he comes from an outstanding pedigree, right? He comes from St. John Bosco, which might be the most prestigious high school program in the nation right now. And it's my experience that players that typically come from these prestigious top programs in the country in high school translate to being some of the best players in college. And I think DeAndre Moore will be a superstar at the 40 acres because, like I said, even though John Tay Cook is the headliner, 
on any given Saturday, DeAndre Moore can be the best receiver on the field. On any given Saturday, DeAndre Moore can be the best player on the field, right? He has strong hands, right? He doesn't drop a lot of balls. He's listed as six foot. I do not think he's six foot, but he plays bigger than his size. And I think that's really important, right? He can make catches, you know, at the point of attack, at the at the catch point. He can, you know, win jump balls. And he's a physical receiver, right? He's not just a small finesse receiver. He's a physical receiver, right? Listed at six foot, 185. I think he's probably 5'10", 5, 5'11", 5, but he's stocky. He's got some muscle on him, right? He can break tackles. I think he's a great route runner, right? He has all the intricacies to be a great route runner, right? He could throttle up. He could throttle down. He has those subtle movements that, uh, you know, can make defenders think he's going one way, and I think he can go the other way, right? He has the footwork to be a great runner, route runner, and then he has the speed to get separation, right? Similar to Jonte Cook. And I think what's special about all three of these receivers, right, Jonte Cook, uh, DeAndre Moore, and Ryan Niblett, even though they win in three different ways, right, they all win in different ways. They're unique receivers. They can attack all areas of the field. And that's not something we've seen from the receiver room really the last two years. I think Ryan Niblett, John Tate Cook, and DeAndre Moore can all win deep. They all have the speed to win deep. They can win in the intermediate area, area right? I think they have the speed, release, and route running ability to win in the intermediate era, area. And then I think <laughs> – keep saying error, right? And I think they have the short area quickness, right, and route running ability and the ability to get off of, you know, press coverage or any type of coverage at the line of scrimmage and win in the short game. And then, of course, you know, you can just throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage and then utilize their run after catch ability as well. So this is a very strong um, receiver class, and it's the type of receiver class that I think you'll look two to three years from now and you'll ask – in conjunction with bringing in Cedric Baxter, the best running back in the country in this recruiting class, with Arch Manning pulling the trigger, this is the type of offense, if all of these players develop how I think they will and how they should, this will be the type of offense that will have every answer to the test. Because we saw with the 2020 Alabama Crimson Tire coordinated by Steve Sarkeesian, no matter what you did defensively, they had every answer to the test. And that's why Mac Jones... Devontae Smith, who won the Heisman, and then Najee Harris were all top three in uh, the Heisman voting. Jeez, I'm drawing a blank. They're all top three in the Heisman voting. That offense was unstoppable. And like I said, no matter what you tried to do to them defensively, they always had an answer to the test. So I ask you, if Cedric Baxter, Arch Manning, Jonte Cook, DeAndre Moore, Ryan Niblett, and then Brennan Thompson and Savion Red from the last recruiting class, if they all develop how we think they will, how will you stop them defensively? What answer to the test will this Texas offense not have? Because if you line up to try to stop the run, if you stack the box to try to stop the power run game with Cedric Baxter, you have receivers that can win in all areas of the field running wide open behind you, whether in the play action or just the drop back game, right? And then if you try to come out in a nickel or dime package to stop these explosive wide receivers or tight ends, then we can dominate you with the power run game all day behind an experienced and talented offensive line led by Kyle Flood. That 2020 Alabama Crimson Tide offense led by Steve Sarkeesian had every single answer to the test. It's why they were explosive. It's why they blew damn near every team they played out. It's why they went undefeated, and that's why they won a national championship, right, in conjunction with the great defense, which I think we'll have and we'll talk about here in a little bit. I'm not saying that this Texas team is two to three years away from a national championship. I'm not saying that this Texas team is two to three years away from – going undefeated, right? But we saw Steve Sarkeesian, when he had his guys, the type of offense that he could put on the field, an uh, offense that no matter what you did defensively, always had an answer to the test. If every player in this 2023 recruiting class at the top of it develops how I think they will and how these recruiter sites think they will, which is why they're at the top of their recruiting class, then Steve Sarkeesian will be able to field another offense at the 40 acres that has every single answer to the test. Steve Sarkeesian with players that were recruited by the previous coaching staff has had two really good offenses the last few years, but they haven't been elite with the type of players he's bringing in this 2023 recruiting class moving forward. You're going to start to see elite offenses every year at the 40 acres, especially with one of the best play callers and play designers in the country in Steve Sarkeesian. Getting DeAndre Moore was a hell of a flip from Louisville to this recruiting class. And like I said, if all of these players develop, Arch Manning, Cedric Baxter, Jonte Cook, DeAndre Moore, and Ryan Niblett, there will not be a question that this Texas offense doesn't have the answer to. So get ready for some explosive fireworks at the 40 acres.
Quick word from NHTSA and the Longhorn Real Estate team. And then we're going to talk about Steve Wolfong saying that this Texas team is starting to recruit the front seven at a championship level. I get chills just saying that. Did you know that driving under the influence of marijuana is illegal? That's right. Driving high could get you a DUI. And if you're wondering if law enforcement can tell when you're driving high, well, everyone else in your life can. Your friends can tell. Your coworkers can tell. Even your parents can tell. So what makes you think law enforcement can't tell? Well, they can. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI paid for by the NHTSA. And for all your real estate needs in the Austin area, please visit www.longhornrealestateteam.com. Yes, dwell, dwell in Austin and Hill Country Mortgages have combined to make your Longhorn Real Estate team. And for all your real estate needs in the Austin area, you need to visit www.longhornrealestateteam.com. If you had real estate needs in the Austin area, why would you not go to the top professionals in Austin, right? And the top professionals in Austin can be found at the Longhorn Real Estate Team. So visit them online at www.longhornrealestateteam.com to get your real estate needs in the Austin area taken care of today. Steve Wilfong from 24-7 Sports said that Texas is starting to recruit the front seven at a championship level. And when Steve Wilfong talks, we listen, right? When we see Wilfong with a crystal ball, we typically know that that player is probably going there, right? He's one of the best at what he does in recruiting in the country, right? One of the biggest names in recruiting in the country. When he talks, we listen. And he said that Texas is starting to recruit the front seven at a championship level. Well, if Steve Wilfong believes that, who am I to disagree with him, right? somebody that covers every recruiting class in the country. And I think what he's saying is he's not saying that Texas is going to win a national championship in two to three years. Right. But what he's saying is, is Texas is starting to recruit the front seven in these last two classes, the way that the powerhouses at the top of the sport have been recruiting their front sevens for years. Right. Texas has been recruiting their front seven the last two years, the way that Georgia Clemson and Alabama have recruited their front seven for years. And as a fan of this Texas football team, as a fan of the 40 acres, who's somebody who has dealt with this for a long time, right? Seeing, you know, a few maybe here and there individual players in the front seven that were great coming to the 40 acres. We haven't seen back to back classes of outstanding players come together. Right. And so when you looked at the 2022 class, the seven offensive linemen were the story. But they brought in eight defensive linemen in that class. They dedicated 15 players just to the trenches alone. But you bring in eight defensive players in that class, right? And then you come back in this 2023 class, and you bring in a Tassili Akan, one of the best defensive players in the nation. Colton Vasek, one of the best edges in the nation. Darion Gallet, somebody that can play in the traditional linebacker spot or can play at the edge spot, right? Leona LaFowle and Samaj Burrell do-it-all linebackers. Anthony Hill, one of the best players in the country, regardless of position, right? A do-it-all linebacker, a quarterback at the of your defense, right? The linebacker position. And it's Sadir Mitchell, right? Who's been compared to Jordan Davis because of his size and his ability to move at that size. One of the best interior defensive linemen in the country, who Georgia, last year's national champion, could very well be this year's national champion. It could be the favorite to win this year's national championship. They were very high on Sadir Mitchell because Sadir Mitchell is the type of player that has thrived in Georgia's defenses and been the reason they've been one of the best defensive teams in the country and the best team in the country overall the last couple of years. And so Steve Wilfong, Steve Wilfong says that Texas is starting to recruit the front seven at a championship level. And John Garcia talked about this is not something that just happens in one recruiting class, right? Because you could have had a great recruiting class in 2022 with eight defensive linemen and then fell off the next year. But I feel like the defensive class, especially the front seven in 2023, superseded what you brought in in 2022. And the 2022 class was really good. Just like you brought in seven offensive linemen, one of the most talented offensive line classes in history, and still were able to follow it up with five offensive line commits in this class. That's not easy to do, right? And so you saw the impact that players like Justice Finkley had last year, who was a regular rotation player. Ethan Burke, when he got in, he made noise, right? Jermon Tapp, Jare Bledsoe, very talented players who should have a bigger impact this year, right? And then you couple that with what you brought in in the 2023 recruiting class. And I have to agree with Steve Wolfong from 24-7 Sports that Texas is starting to recruit the front seven at a championship level. And I think if these players come out, sorry, that was my cell phone that just dropped. If these players come out and continue to build on 
the defensive turnaround and defensive success that we saw last year at the 40 acres, then why wouldn't the 2024 class be the same? Right. And so once you start to stack these recruiting classes together at whatever position, right, whether it's running back, quarterback, wide receiver, that's how you build a dominant brand at the 40 acres at that respective position. And so a great recruiting class in 2022 in the front seven, an outstanding recruiting class in 2023 in the front seven. If you can follow that up in the 2024 recruiting class, you've now created a foundation for outstanding front seven play for years to come at the 40 acres and you couple that with what they're doing on the offensive side with offensive recruiting led by arch manning then yeah texas is going to start to compete for conference championships and they're going to start to compete for playoff spots especially when it expands to 12 and oh yeah texas will be back at the top of the sport in that conversation and oh yeah texas will be back in the national championship conversation in two to three years because they're recruiting at that level and the best players in high school turn into the best players in the college and the best not in the college the best players in college and the best players in college they win conference championships and they win national championships Good times ahead on the 40 acres. Hook them.